Hi, I'm Mike with Mark Metrics, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at how you can use the Mark Metrics All in One Process Ramen System to do compositional analysis of alcoholic beverages. Specifically, today, we're going to be taking a look at a number of different wines with different characteristics to see what sort of information you can gain by using Ramen Spectroscopy. Ramen can be used to analyze fermentation progress, assess sugar content, alcohol content, and even detect flavoring agents in alcoholic beverages. Joining us today is Mark Metrics Application Specialist Bharat Mankani, who will help us identify these differences in the data that we gather throughout the video. Hi, I'm Bharat Mankani. Uh, I'm the Application Specialist with Mark Metrics. We have a white Riesling. We have a pink rose. And we have another white wine, uh, sake, uh, made from rice wine. Uh, we're going to use Raman spectroscopy to measure the differences between these wines and even the, the whites uh, based on the amount of sugar and the amount of alcohol. Alright, uh, let's crack open a bottle of Riesling and use our standard Markmetrics Touch Raman ball probe to measure the Raman spectrum of the Riesling directly in the bottle. Let's go to the computer, set a few parameters, and in a couple seconds, we get our Raman spectrum. Uh, here you see the highest peak coming from the alcohol, and uh, that's just one of the peaks that I'm pointing out for the alcohol. Uh, there are multiple peaks in here that belong to the alcohol. But some of these peaks that you're seeing in the background, uh, the, the smaller ones specifically, uh, belong to the sugars that are in this wine, in the sweeter wine. So it'd be interesting to see the ratios of the alcohol to the sugar peaks in the different wines that we're going to measure, uh, which would give you an idea of how sweet to how dry some of these wines are going to be. Next, we're going to measure the Raman spectrum of sake. Uh, this is the Japanese rice wine. I'd expect the, the sake to be about the same alcohol content as what we saw in the Riesling. Uh, but a little drier, so we might not see as many uh, peaks that come from the sugars. Maybe a little bit of carb peaks, I'm, I'm not sure like what, what we'll see. Uh, let's find out. So again, uh, we just insert the ball probe into, directly into the bottle of wine and uh, make contact with the wine. And in about two and a half seconds, of data collection, we see the Raman spectrum. Again, just to point out, that is the peak that we're seeing from alcohol, including some of these peaks over here. Uh, some of the peaks on the baseline that's gone down drastically compared to the Riesling is because this is drier, uh, so less sugar uh, content in this. Again, in, in the yellow is the spectrum of the Riesling, and in the green is the spectrum of the Sake. Uh, the highest intensity peaks that you see here, this peak and these two, the ones that overlap really, really well, is the peaks that are coming from the alcohol. Uh, the peaks that are missing are the peaks that are coming from the sugars in the Riesling. Uh, from what I can say over here is that there is a lot more alcohol uh, in the Sake than there is in the Riesling and that's most likely because of the unfermented sugars that weren't allowed to ferment uh, all the way through, giving it a higher alcohol content. Next up, I have a bottle of rosé. Uh, just like the previous wine, we're gonna insert the probe into the bottle of wine. So again, uh, the peaks that you see here Bill, uh, coming directly from uh, the alcohol content in the wine, uh, very low amounts of sugar. Let's go ahead and overlay the spectrum of our sweetest wine, the Riesling. And you can see uh, the peaks that belong to the sugars that are missing in the rosé. And let's go ahead and add our driest wine which would be the sake, and you can see, yeah, so the Riesling has 
the low peak for the alcohol uh, and also has the highest amount of sugars, right? So the peaks for the sugars are in that region right there and there's no peaks in that region for the uh, sake and there's no peaks in that region for the rosé. So we're going to pour some of this wine uh, that's a carbonated wine, uh, Prosecco, into a little vial. You can see the carbonation. Here we have the Raman spectrum of the Prosecco. Uh, and again, uh, what I'm hoping to see here, or what we see here, is the peaks that belong to alcohol. And there's one peak that's very distinct, which is right there. And that belongs to the carbon dioxide. By now, you should have a good idea for the scope of compositional information the all-in-one can deliver in a matter of seconds. Sugar content, alcohol percentage, fermentation progress, and the presence of carbonation are all easy to analyze with the power of ramen. So just to compare uh, the alcohol content, I've prepared a 40% solution of alcohol in water. And we're gonna take a ramen measurement So here's a spectrum of 40% alcohol and water. And again, as you see, uh, these features belong to the alcohol. After a certain time, we begin to saturate our detector. Uh, this is way more intensity uh, from the alcohol compared to uh, what we saw in the wines. This just shows us that there's a lot more alcohol. Uh, just to compare, uh, a spectrum of the sake, uh, you can see that, let's take this peak right here, that the ratio of this peak to this peak tells us the amount of alcohol in sake. Uh, if this is 40%, then the sake has a lot less, probably around 10 to 12% of alcohol. In this video, we see just one of the many diverse, data-rich applications for Raman spectroscopy. Come back for more application videos in the near future. Be sure to follow our social media pages to learn more about Mark Metrics and our unique approach to process ramen. If you have any questions, check out our website or send us an email. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more ramen content, and thanks for watching.